thank you once again for joining us again this Tuesday morning as we continue with the book of Colossians. We started yesterday on verse number 9 and uh, we reached the part that says that you may be filled, asked that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and we talked about knowledge here being the insightful component of understanding his will. And then the next line says this, that you may also be filled in all wisdom, in all wisdom. It's critical to note that, uh, let's pray, our Father and our God, we thank you and bless your holy name. Thank you for your mercies which are new today. Release the Holy Spirit afresh on us. Speak to us, dear Father, we are listening. Speak to us, O oh God, that we may walk in framework of your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, it's critical to note that when Paul is asking God to fill the Colossian church with the knowledge of his will, the main concentrate at that particular time is that there was a heresy that was going on. There was a deceptive doctrines that were being perpetrated in that particular territory. And so when he was interceding for them, he wrote and told them, I pray that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, so that whenever there is this heretical surge that is penetrating the territory, you shall not be tossed to and fro by the every wind of doctrine. In other words, you shall be able to stand firm. You shall be able to stand firm because at that particular time, note that the, 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 the weak in faith would have been affected or swept off their feet by the doctrines that were flying by because they were pushing in a certain narrative that was confronting the humanity of Jesus' ministry here on earth, but also denying his deity. So they were pushing a narrative that was confusing the sins. And so it says, you may be filled with the knowledge of his will so that you don't get swept away by these doctrines. But then he also says, wisdom, be filled with all wisdom. Why be filled with all wisdom? The component of wisdom we, I wish we could we talk about wisdom alone as, a, as an item, but then let's uh, just get a few narratives on it. The concept of wisdom in itself is that it builds. Wisdom is a builder. By wisdom, a house is built. By wisdom, a house is built. Proverbs 24, verse 3. And when you lack wisdom, the constructive aspect of your life becomes fragmented. You don't gain access to the full construction. Let me use that word. Assume we are in the construction site. When it has to do with the construction, they check the foundation. They check the structural integrity of that building. They check the architectural design, the proportions of the materials, and also the quality of the materials. Because if the material is faulty, the end product will be faulty. And so they will check the standard of the material being used and the proportions and all that. So that it fits, it fits because once you give the contractor, the, 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 once the contractor gets on site, the contractor seeks to execute the, blu the blueprint according to the BQ. And so whenever we don't work on our lives in the aspect of wisdom, we are exposing ourselves, one, to collapse, two, to structural defects in our building, the life, the temple of the Holy Spirit, for example. We expose ourselves to structural defects, to the point when we are supposed to stand firm against the wiles of the enemy, we are exposed because we lack wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to handle life in different variables. Wisdom is the ability to handle life in different variables. So whenever we lack wisdom, you, we will align ourselves and respond and pattern our lives 
after the dictates of the day-to-day -day, uh, value systems of the world. So if there is something that has arisen as a wind of doctrine, when you lack wisdom, you will just flow with the wind. My goodness. And so he says, I pray that you may be filled with all wisdom. Why all wisdom? Because it has got stages. It has got stages. When you lack wisdom in a certain stage and you want to gain access to that wisdom in another stage, you will have weakened the foundation. By wisdom, a house is built. He says, I pray that you may be filled with all wisdom. Wisdom to handle finances. Wisdom to handle relationships. Wisdom to handle yourself as an individual, to carry out yourself in a manner likely to suggest that you are wise and not otherwise. Wisdom to handle uh, relationships. Wisdom to manage networks. Wisdom to handle children. Wisdom to manage a career. Wisdom to handle business. Wisdom to handle matters spiritual. Whenever you lack wisdom, you are exposed. Believe you me, a hundred percent you are exposed. The danger about wisdom is this. When you have it, we know. When you don't, we also know. Because wisdom has got something, uh, certain parameters that play out in the personality of an individual. Wisdom. Wisdom is not rhetorical in nature. Wisdom is applicative in nature. When you apply it, it now shows that there is wisdom here. Whenever wisdom is missing, we know. Not from the rhetoric, because people can perfect the art of public speaking. People can perfect the art of making sure that they have got the right power of the gab. But with wisdom, when we see it, we know it is there. Why? Conduct to outcomes. There are particular results that only wisdom can bring. Believe you me, there are particular results that we can only see the interplay of wisdom. A lack of it shows. When we talked about knowledge of his will, there is a correlation with the information flow within that will. There is a correlation with the information flow. And then also, when it comes to wisdom, knowledge of that will will demand a certain play, playing out in life, application. So when we see the application of this knowledge of his will, then therein you're deemed to be possessing certain aspect of wisdom. Wisdom to handle marriage. Whenever you lack wisdom, unfortunately it shows. Unfortunately it shows that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and also with all wisdom. Allow me to jump into something called uh, wisdom that, uh, like I said earlier, um, the book of Ephesians and Colossians have got almost like similarities uh, in, in, in a few uh, aspects of it. But then when Paul is praying for the... Um, Ephesian church, li li listen to what he says in verse 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord, remember that line again in Colossians, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and then, and your love for all the saints. Remember the same line. Do not cease to give thanks for you. Same line, making mention of you in my prayers. Same, same narration. 17, why is he praying for them? He prays for them that God, the God, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom. Wisdom is a spirit. It can be given. Wisdom is a spirit. It can be given. When you have it, we know. When it is missing, we know. James makes it clear. If any one of you lacks wisdom, that means you can lack wisdom. By the time James is putting it on ink, to say that if any one of you lacks wisdom, let him pray. So how do I get wisdom? Prayer. Let him pray. And when you are praying, don't doubt. Because anyone who doubts 
is like unstable. Uh, you become unstable in all your ways. You ask in faith. So you can actually lack wisdom. It is possible to lack wisdom. How do we know that you are lacking wisdom? Your life will show. Says, I pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So wisdom has got a revelational component to it. Wisdom has a revelational component to it that helps us apply in sync with that revelation. My goodness, wisdom. But then there are particular concepts that uh, when we say the spirit, it's a spirit, Isaiah puts it clearly in chapter number 11 of Isaiah 11. He says, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. What is this spirit? It is one spirit, but it will manifest what? One, wisdom, the spirit of wisdom. And then it will manifest the spirit of understanding. And then it will manifest the spirit of counsel and might. It will manifest the spirit of knowledge. So all these things are spirits. Wisdom, godly wisdom, because we have got the wisdom of this age again. We have the wisdom of this age, the wisdom of men. That one has got its own shortfalls. But when it comes to the wisdom of Jehovah, this is now where we're talking about. It is a spirit. It is a spirit. When you have the spirit of wisdom, let us not treat the Holy Spirit from the experiential, the, 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 let's not just limit the Holy Spirit to the experiential part of it. We can feel, we can touch, we can hear the Spirit. But then, I like the component of the inanimate nature. I'm using that word carefully. The inanimate nature of the Spirit that manifests a wisdom that plays out in your personality. Goodness. So when we have the Spirit of God manifesting wisdom, then we act a certain way. When wisdom is in you, you act and behave a certain way. When wisdom is lacking, the reverse is also true. You act and behave in the contrary. But when wisdom is in the affirmative, you act and behave towards a certain trajectory in fulfillment of his will, and then your joy now is made complete. Pray that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, that you may also be filled with all wisdom. Why wisdom? Because wisdom is a stabilizer. Every time you see someone's life unstable, wisdom is lacking. Every time you see somebody's life unstable, wisdom is lacking. I'm just trying to point you towards the components that shows, that reveals that wisdom is not there. Every time you see an unstable life, wisdom is missing. Isaiah 33, 6. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. And then he says, and the strength of your salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. The absence of wisdom shows in the manifestation of unstable living. Unstable living confirms lack of wisdom. When you are unstable mentally, unstable socially, unstable spiritually, unstable financially, unstable psychologically, when you are unstable, there is a confirmation. I'm here to tell you, I'm saying this, you are lacking wisdom. The beauty about wisdom is that you can pray and God, get God, God is faithful to release it to you. Wisdom. The absence of wisdom is a disastrous living. The absence of wisdom is disastrous living. It is calamity confirmed. The absence of wisdom is disastrous living, calamity confirmed. Because it's an accident in waiting. Wisdom. When you lack wisdom as a student, you behave, you misappropriate your seasons. When you lack wisdom as a student, young people, 
listen to me. When you lack wisdom, you misappropriate your seasons. You eat your d- dinner in today's breakfast. You will understand that. When you lack wisdom, you eat your tomorrow today. You live by convenience, not by, by convictions. You live by conveniences, the emotions of the excitements of the day, but not the convictions that drives purpose. An absence of wisdom is a clear indicator that there is calamity in waiting. Wisdom is a stabilizer. Wisdom is a builder. Wisdom is a builder. I pray that you will receive the spirit of wisdom today. I pray that you will receive the wisdom of Jehovah today. You who is on the verge of making decisions, very critical decisions, I'm praying for you that you will not lack wisdom. I am praying for you that you will not lack wisdom. I pray that you will understand the concept that Paul is bringing out when he's talking to the Ephesian church, talking to the Colossian church, that I am praying that you will have wisdom. Eternal Father, we thank you for the spirit of grace and wisdom. Thank you, dear Lord, for today. In Jesus' name. Have a blessed day. See you again tomorrow, same time. Let's continue with the same verse.